Well, you're absolutely correct. Uh, there has not been a pandemic like this since 1918, and in many ways, this was even more challenging. Um, first of all, uh, I do believe we acted swiftly, even given the limited information we were having from China. Remember, last February and early March, um, even early March this time, we only had about 100 people in the hospital, and uh, we were averaging a couple hundred cases per day, maybe two or three deaths. Even with that early signal, uh, the president shut down travel from China, from 26 European uh, countries. Uh, he activated a national emergency response. FEMA was the lead agency. All this happened this week, last year. On Thursday evening, President Biden spoke to the nation and seemed to gloss over all of the work that you just talked about and what was done by you and the Public Health Service and so many others last year to coordinate the national response and push hard for vaccines. Do you think that the way that he framed the work that was done was accurate? And how did that make you feel? No, I, I don't think the way he framed it, it is accurate. Uh, and I, I'm just very disappointed with the continued politicization, particularly of Operation Warp Speed. No vaccines have ever been developed in nine months. Uh, it's usually three, five, seven years. Uh, secondly, when we left office, 1.5 million vaccines went into people's arms on January 20th. We had purchased 900 million vaccines. We had purchased 1 billion needles and syringes. We had engaged 40,000 pharmacies and over 70,000 total vaccination sites. We gave PREP Act coverage so every pharmacist, pharmacy intern, pharmacy technician, and EMT in the National Guards could vaccinate. So really, mm -hmm. uh, it is the Biden's responsibility, uh, the Biden administration's responsibility to take the baton and get it over the finish line. But there was such an incredible foundation, and I don't understand why this terrific American story about doing something that's never been done before, truly a moonshot, a Mars shot, that we're handing off administration to administration can't be celebrated. But both the president and the vice president continued uh, to really foment lies and discontent that they were uh, given a mess and there was no plan and no vaccines. And that's just not true. And even the media right now are calling them on it. And there's no reason to continue with this rhetoric. It's a great American story and our administration deserves uh, a significant part of the credit for that. Admiral, President Trump often said that the treatment can't be more harmful than the virus. He was right about that. He was also one of the first to acknowledge that we needed to get past the lockdowns because they were having such a significant health, mental health uh, impacts and other impacts. Talk to us about those, those consequences and whether you believe that in some cases states went too far. Well, it, it has always been a fine line because there's a difference between public health and infection control. What the CDC will more than uh, likely provide is what is best for infection control, but not necessarily what is best for public health. And what I mean by that is, sure, if everyone stayed in their homes for three years, the spread would be down, but suicides, drug abuse, uh, physical uh, harms uh, would be up tremendously as they were. We now know that in 2020, there'll be about 90,000 people who died of drug overdoses. That's up over 25% from the year before. You know, I was just going to ask you about the impact on young people. You're a pediatrician. There's been a lot of discussion around the mental health impacts on children. What could yes. we have done differently? It, it's very important. And, and I also want to state, um, it, it's often put in terms of um, the Trump administration only you know, cared about money and the economy. But the most important factor for public health is the economy and jobs. Uh, the longevity increased tremendously and mortality went down across all groups during the first two years of the Trump administration uh, because we had a thriving economy with employment and hope. So getting the economy going, having people go to work um, is also very important for public health. Admiral, we obviously can't talk about the pandemic without also discussing the tragedy in America's nursing homes and long-term care facilities. Uh, the cost to human life was, was staggering. What would you like to see happen in, in those states, states like Michigan, New York, and New Jersey, and others, where we saw policies that contributed to that incredible loss of life? Well, I think we need to have uh, uh, 
really sunshine uh, put on that. Um, what really disturbed me early was that people like Governor Cuomo blamed the Trump administration and said, we told them to send infected people back to nursing homes. Nothing could be farther from the truth. That is uh, the public health equivalent of throwing gasoline on a burning fire. When you send infectious people into understaffed places that can't provide good infection control in, into a situation where the people who are most vulnerable and most likely to die um, are going to be uh, susceptible. Um, so uh, again, I, I'm not making any premature judgments, uh, but that decision was a wrong decision. Uh, it was not based on what we said in the Trump administration. And in fact, very early, we did everything possible. Remember, as soon as we had point of care tests, what are the first things we did? Send point of care tests and machines to 15,300 nursing homes uh, to test the elderly, to test the staff, to test visitors. Uh, we sent the Binax Now cards for testing. Um, Seema Verma was just a warrior uh, providing strike teams, uh, additional resources, additional funding to nursing homes to support the elderly. So nothing could be further from the truth that the Trump administration uh, asked to send infectious people back to nursing homes. One of the things we did very well is we protected our elderly. They were That's the right thing to do socially, societally, but we know they were the most vulnerable. So we threw everything we could at protecting the elderly. And I think we did a really good job of that. Admiral, where do you see our battle with the coronavirus a year from now? So I, I do believe that we will, uh, through the vaccine, um, have herd immunity in the United States uh, by early summer uh, if people get vaccinated. We've already seen cases decline by 90 percent. Hospitalizations are down by 85 percent. Everything has gone in the right direction. And although we are still at some risk because of the variants, if people get their two shots of Pfizer and Moderna or their one shot of Janssen, um, we know that they will have sufficient immunity to even beat the, the variant. So I do believe firmly that uh, I will be uh, up the street watching Texas A&M with 106,000 uh, fighting Texas Aggie fans uh, come August and September for football. I do think we will be back. Now, it is possible, and I would say probably more likely than not, that we may need a booster in a year or two, depending on what the variants are. Uh, but I would say no big deal, right? If we need a booster, we have the technology, we know how to do it. It'll be given in pharmacies and in doctor's offices and uh, in public health departments. Um, that's certainly a possibility. But I do think the odds are very strong uh, that this country by the summer will be back to near normal or, or, or normal. And um, it, it also pains me when I hear the president talking about Maybe by July 4th, you can have gatherings of a small group outside. We can do that now. It's been safe for a long time to have a small group of people outside where there's good ventilation and distancing. You can do that now. I'm looking for July 4th to have fireworks and celebrations. And I think that's really possible uh, given where we are.